Hello everybody and welcome to the Sovereign Village Project. We are at the end of cash and we are at the end of anonymous transactions in the monetary system. This could not be clear and it's happening in so many ways and it's happening extremely rapidly. I just read an article where MasterCard is releasing a new card called Do Black in partnership with the United Nations, you know, the enemies of humanity and the global government that was predicted in Revelation. They're announcing the, this new card where it will track every single purchase and assign a carbon value to every, you know, there'll be this massive beast system that can track the value of everything in carbon footprint, meaning that you too will have a monetary value by the amount of carbon you consume. So therefore, it's a really easy way to assign mon monetary values so that humans can then be, you know, bought and sold and it's much more efficient. It's a very efficient form of slavery, essentially. So much more efficient than slave auctions and putting chains on people. Um, so, but that's a side point there. But they're announcing this card that will cut you off when you've reached your carbon, your carbon footprint um, limit. So I'm not sure how people are gonna voluntarily sign up for that. You're like, yeah, I definitely want my uh, access to my ability to pay rent and buy food. I want that to be cut off when I, really, re when I reach the limit that they, the elite, set for me. Um, which in conjunction with UBI will just make us completely dependent and they will then you know, put us obviously in squalor and just limit our consumption to what is barely needed to keep us alive in order to be perfect slave laborers. But they will force us into that with the end of cash and that's also clearly occurring. You know, Regardless of whatever excuses they use, the Federal Reserve is not printing cash. You're seeing cash shortages everywhere, gas stations and stores who are not taking cash. And I think I have actually a pretty unique insight into this because I work in downtown Nashville, um, I have, I've been able to really visit these new smart city developments they're building, the pod housing and all of that. Um, they've been working very hard to destroy the existing city and replace it with this kind of development. Um, whether it was locking down Broadway for a year to force many of the businesses out of business, or whether it was the bombing of 2nd Avenue. They uh, set up a bomb with a person inside of a vehicle. They killed somebody to do this. Um, they, they blew up 2nd Avenue and destroyed many of the businesses, which were historic buildings. And so, now that they were, you know, condemned by the city very conveniently because of the bombing, they're now being replaced with more sustainable development and pod housing and, you know, just the dome cities of the future. So there's one right next to where I work, the bars I play at. It's called, uh, I think, 5th and Broadway. And it's brand new development. It's, you know, the mixed use where they got residential t pod housing towers at the top and all of the stores you need to survive off of at the bottom. So that essentially you're in their ecosystem and um, you don't need and you can't have a car. There's nowhere to park it. Um, and you're completely dependent on, on them for employment, for food, for sustenance, for rent, everything. You know, it's, it's a slave system. And so it's been a unique opportunity for me to peer inside of that. And I'll actually probably do some videos from inside of there. Um, but I visited the stores in there and not a single one of them accepts cash. Every single one is digital only. Um, and a lot, what's interesting is a lot of the businesses are chains inside of there and many of those chains, for example, there's a pizza shop that I visited, um, they actually do accept cash at their other locations, but mysteriously they don't accept cash at this one. I suspect the developers, who are, you know, crony developers who get all of their funding from the printed money from the Fed, um, and who are in, working in close conjunction with the politicians, in that case Mayor Cooper, um, you know, he's a developer family and an old, you know, old money, corrupt elite family. They probably disallow the businesses inside from using cash. And so as they use more lockdowns or find other ways to destroy our economy and shut down our small businesses, they're going to replace it with this kind of sustainable pod housing slave development. And there just simply won't be cash used there. So even if there is cash or other systems, Bitcoin or other things, they're not going to be allowed there. They're going to they're going to transition to you on their digital payment system, their one world currency. So, all that said, we need solutions. And we need them really, really fast. Because this is happening at such an incredibly rapid pace. Um, for example, that Do Black partnership, um, that card that MasterCard is putting out, is set to launch in 2022. Cash is ending everywhere all around us. So what are, our, what are our options to transact outside of the system? Because they're most certainly, again, going to use our dependence on their currency to extract compliance. If we do not comply perfectly, it's going to be like a social credit system on steroids. If we don't take their chip, take their mark, put it on your forehead, put it on your wrist, do it, everything they say, you're not going to be allowed to transact. You're not going to be able to pay your rent. You're not going to be able to buy food. You're not going to be able to access health care. Nothing. 
So obviously the biggest answer is pursuing self-sufficiency, which many of us are doing. That's what this whole channel is about, pursuing self-sufficiency as fast as we can. But we are not going to get there in time. And we actually won't ever get there because no human is self-sufficient. If you're using farm tools, even hand tools, you need somebody to forge those tools. You need somebody, if you're still using any kind of mechanized anything, which is going to take us a long time to transition away from, you're going to need a mechanic. You're going to need parts. If you're relying on solar, what happens when the solar panel reaches the end of its lifespan? You're going to still need to rely on that industrial system. And we can transition away, but it's going to take a long, long time. Gabby and I are in year two or year three of intensely pursuing self-sufficiency, and we're nowhere close. Not even nowhere close. And even though, like, what happens when we can't transact? We're limited to this five-acre parcel of land. We're just not going to produce everything we need. We're not going to be able to get the salt we need. We're not going to be able to get the iodine we need, you know. We are going to need to transact, point blank, period. So, what are our options? The most obvious, obvious one that comes to mind is cryptocurrency. There are some very good anom anonymous cryptocurrencies such as Pirate Chain, Monero, um, where you can transact pretty anonymous, anonymously. You know, you get a laptop off of Craigslist, buy it from somebody, don't put your name on it, um, you know, email that person under a, a dummy email account. Buy it in cash and don't put it on your own internet. When you're transacting in these, you know, you go to, go to a coffee shop. Maybe you do wear a mask and sunglasses. You go to a library or, or access Wi-Fi somewhere else. So your name is never associated with this laptop, and then you can trade those cryptocurrencies completely anonymously. However, all of that is still completely reliant on your access to the internet. And I'm not very qualified to talk to talk about this. I may be very well wrong. So correct me if I'm wrong. If you're a technical person who understands all of this, correct me if I'm wrong. But it seems like Crypto is completely dependent on just a few internet corporations, providers like Spectrum and Sprint and, and uh, Skynet or whatever uh, Elon Musk's new system is called. And I'm sure undoubtedly the elites that are building this one world currency are very aware of cryptocurrency and they have a plan for that. Because while there's been some attempt to kind of paint Bitcoin in a negative light, it's the central banks would be crushing it right now. They would be destroying it. They would be killing people for using cryptocurrency. And initially they did. Initially, they locked up the people who were using bitcoins and building exchanges, and, and some of them are still rotting in prison and probably being tortured and all that. But they're not resisting it as much as you would expect them to, and I think that's because they have a plan. Either they are going to use the blockchain as part of this beast system, or they're simply just going to shut off our access to the internet if we do not comply. So I'm going to go ahead and just skip cryptocurrency for the rest of this discussion. I do think it's a useful medium of exchange right now for anonymous transactions to avoid paying taxes which I openly and strongly encourage everybody to do. Don't give money to people who are bombing kids on, in Yemen and who are funding genocide and who are our oppressors. Don't, don't give them your money. Openly, don't pay taxes. But that being aside, it doesn't seem like it will really be a viable option potentially in the future. So there are some other mediums of exchange that I really like. I like the gold backs. I've been exploring that. They're like an, an actual like bill made of paper but that contains gold in it and it's laminated. Um, and it has a value of around like three or four bucks, so it's a good small unit of exchange. You know, you can't trade really significant pieces of gold if you're trying to get a cup of coffee or you're just trying to maybe get your mechanic to just look at your car real quick or you're just trying to buy some vegetables or some salt or something like that. Um, so it's, it's a nice small unit of exchange that's physical and tangible. And I know a lot of people have problems with it, like it doesn't actually have the value of gold that's worth 350. But the point is it does have that inherent value inside of it, um, and it's not easily... Um, counterfeited. Of course it could and will be counterfeited if it comes down to that, but it's recognizable and people will understand it and they, they can grasp it and realize that it has value. So it seems like it will be a useful medium of exchange and probably retain its value. And I would suspect it would hold its value above the gold for, for it would actually go up in value as cash disappears. Um, so I wouldn't consider it an investment, but I think it will be a useful medium of exchange. So that's an option I'm going to pursue. When we get our farm stand built, I actually may sell gold backs at a slight markup. Um, to try to get more of them into my community so more people can then we can get our own kind of economy going with just simple small amounts of gold like it was done in the old days but of course that does have some of its own problems and that can just be outright banned and they can you know try to enforce it obviously in this community we are actively fighting enforcement of ty tyranny but uh you know if we lose that battle it's going to be very difficult to transact so in the end everything comes down to barter barter will be our last refuge our last means of trading value is barter perfect? No, there's a reason we don't use it. It's so difficult because it's difficult to, to have the right, you need to have something worth $5 to trade something worth $5, you know, and that's very difficult. If, you're, if you just need, you had a bad uh, tomato crop and you just need $8 worth of tomatoes from your neighbor, 
you have to find something that they need to, that's worth $8. You might just not have anything that's worth $8, so it's really difficult to do. But um, the better you get at it and the more relationships of trust you've built and the wider your circle for bartering, the better. So that's why I think it's crucial now to be building our bartering systems. Um, Jack Spirico has a great uh, video on setting up, I think it's called Blanket Barters or Barter Blankets. If you search that, you should be able to find it. I'll try to find that video and attach it to this one. Um, but it's basically a swap meet. You meet up and you lay out all of your goods on a blanket and you have a lot of people in one place. So if you need a hammer or you need a specific tool or a specific small item, somebody's going to have that. Um, and that can be replicated in gun shows, that could be replicated uh, in food barters, um, tool barters. It could be specific or general. Um, so having barter meets is very valuable and we should be setting those up now. That's part of what we're going to do at, finding, at the uh, um, Back to the Land Festival is try to group people regionally and have them start setting up plant swaps, barter meets, um, food co-ops, all of these kind of things that are going to be necessary for us to survive and thrive. Um, so plant swaps specifically is another good one to be setting up. Seed swaps, um, places where you can just swap the goods you need. But also just building relationships of trust with your neighbors, building community. That's what this channel is all about, is to really prepare ourselves for that. And one thing we kind of neglect to understand about barter is that in a truly self-sufficient economy, in an economy of small communities that aren't reliant on industrialization, barter is actually different than you would expect most of the time. Yes, sometimes you meet and you negotiate and you try to get the best deal. But more of it is really the gift economy, and I've really been discovering that as I move towards self-sufficiency and build community. As you build relationships of trust within your community with neighbors and with like church groups and things like that, those people become your allies, and you start to give things to them, and they start to give things to you. And rather than a barter system, it's like the reverse of a barter system. It's like you're trying to outgive them. Our neighbors have given, we would not have built our home without the help of our next door neighbor. He's been invaluable in helping us build our home. And he gives us so much. He just gives us our tool, tools to use. He lends things to us without question, um, with asking nothing in exchange. And it, it gives you this feeling of guilt. You're like, oh my gosh, he's given me so much. I feel terrible. I need to outgive him. So we give him seeds and we, we um, he's recently actually facing potential job loss because of not taking the, you know, the forced vaccine or the gene therapy. And... So we're, we're trying to use our Gabby's marketing ability and, and my, uh, my homestead design business. I, he's very good at construction, this neighbor. And so we have a lot of people who kind of need his services. So we're kind of helping, you know, trying to encourage him to just start taking work and we'll send him work. And so we're trying to get him self-employed. You know, we feel like that's something we can really give back. And so you just enter into the system of trying to outgive your neighbors. And it's beautiful. It's so much fun. It's, uh, it's such a healthy way to transact. Did you ever think trading would be you trying to lose the, lose the negotiation. You try to, and you won't. Everybody wins. You can't. You can't outgive your neighbor, and they can't outgive you. Um, so it seems strange, but the way to survive and to prepare for this cashless economy is to right away start being the giver. Give to your neighbors. Are you always going to get everything back? No. Doesn't matter because you should only give what you can afford. After all, you know, don't be broke. Don't give away your house. Don't give away everything you have. Don't give away all of your seeds. But give away your surplus as fast as you can. I, I'm the, that's that social capital that they talk about in the kind of eight forms of capital that's popular amongst uh, adherents of permaculture. That's the single best thing you can do. Set up the barter systems. Start those meetups now. Start those organizations now. Um, be ready to make sure those things are discreet because undoubtedly the beast system will not like barter meetups and it will attempt to, uh, to prevent them from happening. That will become black market activity. So make sure you have ways of hiding this activity and keeping it very insular. But most of all, just give. Give, give, give to your neighbors. And also, produce abundantly. Get your gardens going fast. Learn your trades and make sure you have a lot to give. And start developing those relationships of trust now. It's going to be our only way to survive. But it's the way we should be going anyway. You know, thank God for this move towards totalitarianism. Thank God we're in some kind of end time cycle. I'm so happy because I've never felt more fulfilled and led a life more meaningful than this last year or two. And the relationships I've built with people and continue to build are so fulfilling. This is how we're meant to live. We need to move in this direction anyway. We need to move away from industrialization. We need to move away from these systems that tyrannize us. You know, really technology just is not compatible with liberty and it's not compatible with a healthy life at all, I don't think. I think we've been fed this lie that prior to industrialization, everybody was dying at the age of 30 and was just miserable and squalor and, and there was violence and wars every day. I think that's propaganda. I think that's a lie. I think people were happier, healthier, 
and may have even lived longer, but they at least live better. I'd much rather live better than live longer before our dependence on the industrial system. So let's, let's move away. We, we have time right now. Those of us who are watching this channel and paying attention, we know where things are headed. So we have the blessing of time. We, and the more we prepare, the less we have to suffer because in the end, many of us will probably have to choose death over enslavement. But the more we prepare, the more we move away, the less likely that we'll have to make that hard choice. We can kind of outrun it and outhide it, I think, in a lot of cases, and we can outfight it. So let's start moving that direction. Let's build those relationships of trust. Let's trade. Let's experiment with other mediums of exchange. You know, I'm delving a little bit into cryptocurrency. I'm experimenting with gold backs and other mediums of exchange. So I'd like to hear your brainstorms also. If you have other mediums of exchange outside of cash, I'd love to hear what they are. All right, everybody. Hope you stay safe, be well, and happy homesteading.